Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show is brought to you by Air Patrol North. Visit airpatrolnorth.ca. When it comes to hosiery, he is without equal. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is a legend. Ed the Sock is on the show today. Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show. Coming up! Our guest today hails from a sock drawer somewhere in Toronto. He is a former cable radio star, late night talk show host. Uh, He was a much music BJ and host. He was host of Ed's Night Party, host of Fromage, overnight host now on The Rock 94.9, the voice of sanity and insanity. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the program, Ed the Sock. Ed, it's great to see you again, my friend. It's been a long time. You look fantastic. Have an ancient bit. Thanks very much, Joe. I wish I could say the same. By the way, I did not come from a sock drawer, and I don't know what former cable radio star is. What the hell is cable radio? Like what? Cable what? and cable and radio. Oops. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I started on cable access, but not cable radio. It was TV. I'm doing radio right. now for the first time. Right, right. But so you are the word, to your okay, researcher. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, listen, 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 Ed. I for the very first time I ever heard you. Okay, it was it was on uh, John Oakley's radio show back in, oh, in, in yes. the day. So therefore, I I made that I made that uh, that that assumption. So that's where it came from. But anyway, for sure, of course, everybody everybody knows you, uh, the the face of, of cable radio, cable TV, and and much music. Um. But okay, you said you didn't come from a sock drawer in Toronto. Uh, like, did, was there a mom and dad sock, or or did you just sort of come out of the primordial ooze? You know, uh, I don't like to get into my personal life. I thought we were going to talk about sports and how I know nothing about sports. I thought we were going to fill a whole show about how little I know about sports. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so I'm going to go with the primordial ooze. Uh, you know. I, I, I want to talk about socks as well, because there's a lot here. Uh, you know, like I've got, uh, you know, what happens to these missing socks that I have? You know, there's nobody, I don't see them on milk cartons. Uh, is, is this a little bit unfair, would you say? I have all these Joe, what's socks. the story with this Swiss army knife? What, what <laughs> army do they, have they ever had? If you're going to talk about my ethnicity, I'm going to talk about <laughs> yours. <laughs> okay, all right. So uh, the Swiss are, are, are neutral. And and I'm 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 a neutral guy, so I think it works out for me. But okay, let's go back into your history, Ed. Um, way back in the day, I remember you being on cable TV, and you actually had me on your show. And you were one of your co-hosts was Harlan Williams, uh, and you That's had right. a lot of pretty cool uh, co-hosts. And uh, what can you tell us about working with Harlan? Uh, it was I, I never knew what I was going to get, uh, Harlan. Uh... You know, as if you know his comedy, you know that he's off the wall. I mean, and he's in person, he's off the wall. Like, that's not just so much an act as it's him. It's how he lives his life. It's how he views the world. Uh, Very talented guy. uh, Very fun guy. Uh, The only reason he stopped uh, co-hosting the show is because he moved to L.A. full time. And, you know, on a Cable 10 budget, which is zero, there was no way to accommodate that. Okay, so you've had a number of hosts over the year, co-hosts, I should say. And uh, is there a favorite? Uh, Humble Howard, uh, Harland, and, and numerous others. Uh, do you have any anybody who is who is your favorite to be around? Well, it's kind of tied. Uh, first would be my the, the co-host on uh, the last few seasons, uh, Leanna Kay, who was the first one who could really give back to me rather than sort of just take it. Uh, She knew where I was going with the jokes. She'd help me get there, and then she would take me down. Um, So there's that, and we still do the Ed and Red podcast. If you want to look it up, it's there. Uh, But uh, also Eric Tunney, the late Eric Tunney, who was uh, my co-host when the show really got popular. Uh, Probably one of the best stand-up comics uh, uh, in history, in North American history. And and I say that without hyperbole. He he 
turn stand-up comedy into a real art form. And uh, he unfortunately left us way too soon a few years back. And uh, I still uh, am sad at what could have been for him because he, he was one of the greats. So, Ed, uh, you were on my show back in the day, back in, I think it was probably the late 80s, early 90s, somewhere around there. You would come on my show, do predictions. Do, do you recall that? Oh, yeah. You were the first person to ever put me on broadcast TV. I would, uh, I would do little sports predictions, even though I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I would do sports predictions. We didn't have the Internet back then for me to research, so I had to just wing it. Uh, but the very first time I was on broadcast TV was on your uh, sportscast until uh, management got wise and nixed that. <laughs> yeah, there was somebody who had a problem with that, but I, I obviously did. It was a great it was a great gig. But, you know, you're not the first sock we've had on this show. Okay, a, a few weeks back, we had uh, um, the Cobra, Anthony Corelli, the great Santini. Uh, we had a, 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 yeah, a, a Santini. Uh, what's that, Vic? What's his Santino Morella, Santino Morella, the wrestler, and he had the, the Cobra. Were you a little jealous when you saw the Cobra come on the show? No, I didn't watch it. No. <laughs> well, that's this fair. The first time, this is the first time hearing of it. Yeah, I what, what do you think of the Cobra? Where, do you think, right, okay, you look at the Cobra, you know that you have, I'm sure you're familiar a little bit with what the Cobra had, uh, you know, in WWE, the success the Cobra had. Uh, are you a little uh, jealous of the Cobra? Do you think you could beat the Cobra? What are your thoughts when you see, you know, the Cobra? Well, listen, there, there are not very many uh, puppets, sock puppet type things in uh, entertainment. There's room for a few of us. So, okay. Uh, I, I don't I don't go into the sports sphere. I don't start wrestling, and uh, he doesn't do comedy. Though years ago, uh, Mick Foley, uh, Mankind, whatever character you want to remember. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he 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 had his character Socko at the time, which was just a sock he put on his hand, and he was in Toronto to uh, to do a, a a show, wrestling show, and I interviewed him before the show, and uh, he. It started off badly because I got one of those little folding chairs from the WWE uh, like action figure yep. set yep. and hit him yep. over the head with this little tiny folding <laughs> chair, which he didn't see the humor in. Uh, and then we were supposed to do a match, uh, Socko versus me. And I said, okay, Joe, this might shock you, but uh, uh, those things, oh, uh, they're, 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 yeah, they're not real. They're arranged in advance. And, uh, I know, sit down, take a breath. Uh, but I tried to arrange, like I, I was saying, let's have it be a draw. And he said, no, Socko has to win. I said, uh, no, you're in my town. Uh, it, it will be a draw. And he got really, really hostile and really, really angry. And that was, uh, we just left. It never happened. Well, here, here's another sock I want to talk about. Uh, Triumph the Insult Dog from Conan. Do uh, you see him as a bit of a rip up? Because here's the guy who was uh, who was in in the comedy biz. Well, here's the story. Years ago, I sent uh, VHS tapes. That's how long ago this was to the <laughs> uh, head of uh, talent, uh, the talent booker on the Conan O'Brien show, and we had a couple of phone conversations about bringing me on as a character. And then suddenly, uh, she said, we're, we're going in a different direction. And a, a short time after that, I had people calling me and saying, congratulations, I saw you on Conan O'Brien. I said, well, that's news to me. Uh, it turned out that their head writer had, after I had sent tapes and talked to their head of talent, their head of talent who consults with the writing team, um, uh, their head writer came up with this character who was remarkably similar to me, a, a unique voice, a cigar, uh, doing insults. Uh, and uh -huh. uh, he claims that it was a, a complete accident. He had no idea. Uh -huh. But um, it does seem a little bit suspicious. I, I should say so. It does seem a little bit suspicious. It seems like a kind of a blatant ripoff, but that's just uh, my opinion, Ed, because, uh, you know, we, we live here in Canada. Well, you were a VJ on Much Music for a long time. Uh, considerable length of time very cool program you had you had the 
an opportunity to, an opportunity to interview the likes of uh, Paris Hilton, uh, Britney Spears, Beyonce, uh, you know, numerous people over the years. Do you have like some of your uh, favorites that stick out? Well, uh, Christina Aguilera was always really, really nice. Uh, when I first interviewed her, she had just walked across the street from the record company uh, building. Uh, no, you know, nobody knew who she was. And uh, that's why I interviewed her. It was like no one wanted to interview her because who's this? A Mickey Mouse Club girl who had a song on the Mulan soundtrack? Who cares? Uh -huh. But I always liked uh, talking to new talent. So, and she never forgot that. So we always got along. I hosted her uh, one and only Canadian uh, press conference. Uh, and uh, my job was to sort of interrupt the question she didn't want to answer. So I would tell people to sit down and think of a better, a better question and stuff. And the press was furious. Uh, so we got along well. Uh, Avril Lavigne was another one yes. who I interviewed when nobody wanted to talk to her. And then a few days later, she blew up. We were always, uh, always close. Um, Willie Nelson singing on the road again with Willie Nelson. That was, that was something, uh, singing with, uh, Beyonce and the, uh, Destiny's Child Girls, also a memorable moment. And see, part of the problem is, uh, I interviewed so many people and I'm not impressed with celebrities. So I forget more of the people I spoke to than I remember. Uh, I remember, uh, William Shatner get, starting to give me the finger, then realizing a camera was on and stopping halfway. <laughs> so it was like half oh. his finger was up. Um, <laughs> who I remember, uh, 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 what, what's his name? Uh, the lead singer, Chris Martin from uh, Coldplay. We were on right. the uh, balcony, the open balcony of the Chum building. And I got him, I, I was humming the Benny Hill theme and I got him uh -huh. to run around uh, like those <laughs> Benny Hill sketches. Um, it was, uh, you know, I remember, uh, asking, uh, Gavin Rossdale of Bush, if he ever thought of naming his band pubes. Um, so, uh, <laughs> there was, uh, there, you know, there were so many, if, if they were famous in the day, I talked to them though. I have to correct you never spoke to Britney Spears. Oh, okay. Got that wrong. I okay. dressed up as Britney Spears uh, oh, okay. uh, Maybe for a that's sketch on the MMBAs. Probably. Yeah, right. it's probably that. But I actually and I never probably, talked to her. I probably couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, I know. It was uncanny. Yeah. <laughs> Quite honestly, I'm very much a chameleon. Okay, what's the worst interview? One that really went sideways. Can you remember? Oh, Vanilla like Ice. Me? Okay. Vanilla Ice went bad. Uh, this right. is back when he was uh, trying to uh, do like Cypress Hill, like this, this uh, you know, tough rap all about drugs. And we flew to Florida. So I keep looking off camera. It's very distracting. <laughs> um, we, uh, yeah, see, I did it again. Um, we, we flew to oh, Florida. Like to, thank you. Uh, don't interrupt me. Uh, we uh, flew to Florida and uh, did the interview with him. And he was really stuck up. And uh, I let him, he took three shots at me. And I let people take three shots. And then the gloves are off. Uh -huh. uh, so. Uh, he took his three shots, and then he said uh, he started talking about how rough his life had been, what a terrible uh -huh. life life is, he'd had. And uh, this is a bit of a dated reference, but I said, "Oh yeah, we're going to see Sally Struthers doing commercials for you," because <laughs> in those days she did commercials for like yes. people in impoverished nations. Uh, and uh -huh. he got mad, and he said, uh, "Sock puppet gimmick." I said, "Yeah, but one that's still working." <laughs> um, so. Uh, we finished the interview. Me and the camera guy are walking to the car, and uh, his stage manager or manager comes out and says, Hey, guys, Ice doesn't want to do the interview. We're like, What? Uh, he says, yeah, Ice doesn't want to do the interview. What do you mean? Well, he doesn't want to do the interview. I paused. I said, We, we just did it. No, no, he doesn't <laughs> want to do the interview. And I said, Do you mean he doesn't want us to use it? He said, Yeah, he doesn't want to do the interview. I said, you know what? He had the opportunity to say no when we tried, we first booked it. The opportunity to say no when we got here. The opportunity to interrupt and stop the interview midway. He didn't take any of those opportunities. We got the interview. We're using it. He says, Ice isn't going to be happy. I said, that's not my, that's not my concern. 
Um, <laughs> and we uh, got in the car. And maybe a minute later, the uh, record company he was with called me and said, hey, thanks so much for doing that interview. I really loved it. Really appreciate the attention. <laughs> That's a little confusing. No, a little confused not. By that? He, <laughs> he called, basically, he called the record company to complain. And the record company probably said, you see anybody else there interested in interviewing you? And the answer <laughs> yeah, was yeah. no. And so the yeah. record company was like, shut up. Yeah. It's publicity. Yeah. Um, the other yeah. uh, bad one was Anthony Kiedis from Red Hot oh, Chili yeah, Peppers. Chilies, the Chili's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, nobody told, told, like, usually publicists would, okay, in the early days, publicists didn't tell their talent that uh, they were going to be interviewed by me. They just said, I'm much music BJ. And then they'd take off and leave me with the talent. It was like, what's going on? Um, but as I became more well-known, especially among music industry, uh, they, you know, they, they didn't do that. Well, with Anthony Kiedis, they reverted to the earlier form. Didn't tell him who he was being interviewed by. So he shows up there to be interviewed. He sees me. He's like, what's going on? I'm going to interview you. Now, he wasn't happy. <laughs> His questions were, the answers were slow to come. Yeah, yeah. So I said, uh, at one point, I just stopped and said, you want to hit me right now, don't you? And he paused just a little too long before I said, no, 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 I don't want to hit you. The answer was, <laughs> yes, he wanted to hit me. And uh, uh -huh. Jessica Simpson's sister, Ashley Simpson, who was riding Jessica's coattails for a while, um, she was so stupid that my brain started to, to ooze out of my eyes. Yeah, that was not, not the, not the uh, immense. So uh, let's, let's talk about here. I've, I've got a, actually I've got a clip from, uh, this is when you're, you're doing a shift on much music that wasn't uh, regularly scheduled, apparently. So Nicholas, roll that. I'm going to do Wednesday, and then I'm going to do the 17th. Nothing about the third. You're lucky I just happened to show up. What kind of disrespect is that? You figure I can just be here at a moment's notice whenever well, you want sure me? I'm sure I put it on your desk. You know what? Can you talk to Rachel for a minute? All right. Hello? Rachel? Hello? Rachel, it's Ed. Hi. Hi, Rachel. Yeah. You know what they did to me? What? They just, like, scheduled me without telling me, and I showed up by accident, and here I am on the air. I'm not even dressed for it. You're not even dressed? Can you imagine what kind of disrespect that is? They well, ever done you... that to you? Um, yeah, I've shown up for work not dressed before. That's not what I meant. I know I've seen you. Oh, yeah. They did that to me on my birthday. Yeah, when I saw you. you couldn't show up for work. I saw your birthday suit. You know what, Rachel? I shouldn't be... I'm not mad at you, though. I'm not mad at you. You're just another, another lackey like me that they treat like a dog. Well, they treat us like dogs, don't they, Rachel? Well, not me. Maybe you. Oh, Rachel. <laughs> Careful with oh. the brown nosing. You'll get it on your cheek. Hey, hey, look, I'm, I'm hobnobbing with the big shots here at Edgefest right now. There's so. no big shots at Edgefest. Yeah, I was yeah. there Thursday. Who are you hobnobbing with? Um, we got some people here from Gob. Say hi. Gob? Hi. Hey, hi, how are you, Gob guys? This is Theo. Yeah, I remember we met before, Gob guys. Yeah, I didn't have a chance last time to kick your sock, but... Oh, yeah, you're real brave trying to do it now from Ottawa. Why don't you come <laughs> over right. here, Gob guy? I mean, just so, uh, Ed, what made what made much? So you can see the guy well, looking in the, in the window back there. What made much so uh, so incredibly successful? Uh, well, it was uh, that we didn't have any money, and so yeah. instead of trying to razzle dazzle with money, we the, the emphasis was on personality. His personality, does, you know, that doesn't cost a lot, especially with what they were paying. So the emphasis was on personalities. Uh, authenticity, being real before authenticity was a term everybody overused. We uh, people could relate to us. Uh, you know, we weren't the uh, the uh, uh, prom king and queen. We were the uh, people that got shoved in lockers. So uh. we were the people. We were misfits in our own way, and uh, we had no pretensions. So we suited uh, Canadian sensibilities. Because Canadians are not ones to be, you know. Uh, courted by uh, by fame and the allure and the mystique of fame, so we were just honest, and everything we did was in the moment. There was no there was no planning. So I think people got the sense that uh, we were uh, discovering what was going to happen at the same time that they were, and so people watched. I think not just for the music, 
but for the personalities, uh, for what we uh, said about the music, how we contextualized the music. You know, we, we sort of brought, the music was a bit of a canvas, but we worked from it. And that's why when uh, Much Music changed management and management said, oh no, everybody's watching music videos on the internet now. Uh, they don't want to watch us. Uh, they didn't understand that music videos weren't the only reason people watched Much Music. And so they went in directions that, that were not uh, much music strengths. Let's put it that way. In other words, they started making crap. And uh, they, they hated the audience. The new management hated the audience. Um, the uh, person in charge, there was a policy that came in saying our audience is stupid and they can't remember anything more than three months ago. So don't reference anything that happened more than three months ago. And I had just done a special called uh, Smart Ass, the Ed the Sock Report. It was supposed to be the start of a new series where we trace the history of hip hop music back to like the 16th century. And I said, we just did a documentary that went back to the 16th century and it had higher ratings than anything else that week. And they said, yeah, nobody's interested in that. I said, no, you, you didn't hear me. It had the highest ratings of the week. Yeah, nobody's interested in that. Okay, then. And then uh, the uh, person running the programming said to me, am I allowed to uh, use like mild four, li four letter words here? <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. Uh, she said, our viewers are stupid and just want shit. So we're just going to give them shit. And you know what? She lived up to her commitment. Well, you know, that happened in every just about every part of television in Canada, didn't it? The, the corporates took over and things started to change. And I guess maybe part of it is them assuming the audience is stupid and uh, that they'll accept whatever they get. They get. And and, uh, and I guess uh, the other part of it is they want to save money and they want to find ways to cut, 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 cut budget. So uh, eventually yeah, the, that's, uh, uh, th that's reason, what happens, right? For some reason, uh, TV seems that it, it's going to be like nowadays that they're going to cut themselves to prosperity. Because you know yeah. what? If you're, a, if you're an egg farmer and you want to cut down on the cost of chicken feed, you can get right. rid of <laughs> half your chickens. But you're only going to yeah, have I... half the eggs to sell. So what have you accomplished? Nothing. Yeah. 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 And that's what happened. That's what, now, you know what? You just, uh, you just uh, summarized Canadian television in, in the egg story right there. So in yeah, addition, well, the problem uh, so, is, Joe. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, go ahead. Actually, yeah. I'm not, no, no. Uh, the uh, no, yeah. <laughs> the problem is that uh, TV, the creative industries, are inherently risky industries. You have to take a risk on creativity. You got to have people who understand smart risks, who understand the audience, understand uh, how to market it, and uh, just get a feeling in their gut for uh, what what will succeed, what will connect. The problem now is that the people running TV are uh, MBAs, Masters of Business Administration. They are taught to minimize risk, the exact opposite of what's needed for creative industries. So you've got people in, their, in jobs that they're not suited for at all. And that's why uh, you see TV, like Canadian TV, it's, it's not, it, it doesn't connect to people the same way. It doesn't really feel like Canadian TV. I mean, there's there's exceptions. There were things like uh, Kim's Convenience and Shit's Creek, which mm -hmm. uh, were, were good programs and uh, did well, both at CBC, who took risks. But other than that, there's, there's very little that resonates with people and that Canadians are talking about. Well, I want to tra I want to transition here from risk to risque because after you left much, you've had some risque show shows. Of course, you had Ed's Night Party, which well, it's going all the way along. But uh, you had uh, you know hosting the the uh, the movies on CHCH, but you sort of more or less got away from from that uh, the the risque platform, shall we say? Uh, what was your what was your? I look, I look at you today, and and you've sort of had a transition. Uh, what was the reason for that for making that move? Okay, first of all, in 2023, you got to be careful. Use the, the term that I made a transition. Um, okay. uh, secondly, um, uh, Ed's Night Party was running at the same time that I was at Much Music. Right. So uh, 
I was at Much Music and uh, on City TV with Ed's Night Party for uh, 14 years. Um, what what was the change? I, I got, first of all, times changed. Ed's Night Party, then later Ed and Red's Night Party, was a, basically a burlesque show that uh, mm-hmm. took a lot of uh, Canadian TV conventions. Remember, Canadian TV was very boring before we came along, before Chum came along. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And so it, I was basically doing all the things they said you couldn't do and having fun with, I was tweaking sensibilities. It was, it was fun. Uh, but it, it, times change. I got bored of, of the show because uh, the last two seasons of our show, it's night party. We were partners with an American firm, not, not chum. And they pumped a lot of money into it. So uh, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. We went HD. We were the first uh, regular uh, series in Canada to go HD. Wow. You'll never see that in the history books. Um, and so everyone said, well, you're going HD. You can't use the set you used to, used to use because our, our uh-huh. set was uh, plastic that had been uh, pressed into the shape of metal. And we just put it up with duct tape. And right. we, went to the, we rented this studio that was like the size of a football field. We had somebody build us a set instead of us building it in a sub basement. And it just, it, 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 there was too much space between everybody on the set. It lost that feeling, that feeling that like we snuck in and did the show when nobody was looking. And uh, so I was, and everybody got dressing rooms and people who got dressing rooms all of a sudden got attitude and uh, it was just not fun anymore. So I uh, sold the hot tub uh, for charity to a guy in Kingston. Um, I don't know if he caught anything from it or not. I lost, I lost touch with <laughs> it. Um, but it was just, uh, you know, you, been there, done that kind of thing. Right. But it was a hell of a run, man. 16 years or something like that. Uh, I mean, that's, that's well, well, and, and television, if include, holy crap. Yeah. If you include the uh, cable 10 years, which they were also national on cable 10. Uh, yeah, it's uh, 16, 16 and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. I heard you mention that before. So uh, getting back to sports for just a minute here, uh, you, you spent some time doing some sports net stuff. And uh, we have a clip of you with James Sabolsky when you're talking about the James, uh, the J- Blue Jays medical staff and, and what they were doing to their players at that particular 25 time. 25 days on a um, fractured foot. <laughs> 25 days on a fractured foot. What kind of health and doctors do the Jays have? The guy only has two feet. You couldn't notice that one of them was a little bit off. Come on, guys, do a little more than hand out that A535, all right? It's clearly not a, it's clearly an indictment of our health care system, isn't it? Uh, no, it's not our health care system. It's obviously the Jays' doctors. I don't know what they're doing, snapping each other with towels or something, but pay attention to the players. Okay, what are you wearing? What are you, what are you, what are you wearing there? What, what? What were you wearing? I was wearing. You know, when a you're shirt. on the red carpet, we're always wondering what you were. What were you wearing? Yeah, I was. I was yeah. wearing a shirt. I'm not oh, okay. sure I understand go. the, yeah, the yeah. question. It's I just don't an, wear just... designers. Okay. They don't make All sample right. sizes in my size. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was a good deal of gig here. I want to do something else here. So, this is a clip from Ed the Sox trivia game, uh, making the pandemic cool, sort of. I guess at the time. Let's oh, roll some geez. of that. You did research for sure. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. My name's Clinton. Clinton, and where are you from, Clinton? Downtown Toronto. Okay. Oh, the ghost town. It's like a ghost town down there now, isn't it? I love it. I love it. You, so you love the you love the virus that's keeping people indoors. Well, I don't know about the virus, but I like the outcome. Yeah, I know. I. I, I, I I've been a I've been a pioneer in social distancing for years. I've been staying the hell away from people as long as possible. What color do the ghosts turn to once Pac-Man eats a power pellet? Or do they turn red, white, or blue? Blue. Are you sure about that? Are you certain? Well, don't they flash? They flash don't a color. Flash? Yeah, but they change oh, the color. Stick with blue, but they don't they flash blue and white? I don't know. I'm going to stick with blue. You're going to stick with blue? Okay. And the answer is... Blue! Yay! Well done. 
So what, tell us about I'm, the, uh, uh, the trivia. I, I, trivia. I, Joe, cool. I'm, I'm wearing the same shirt in that clip that I'm wearing now. <laughs> I noticed that. I noticed that, yeah. Yeah, I I, uh, yeah, I'm Canadian. I don't, I don't like wear something once and throw <laughs> it away. So what did he win there? One hundred fifty thousand or close to it? Uh, I think he won uh, an Ed the Sock comic book. Very good. He was a smart that guy. Was by a, the, way, uh, the whole show. Th- that was a project that uh, that that trivia thing. It uh, it, it it didn't take <laughs> off. I I did it for a couple of weeks. I said, you know what? Because it was on Discord, and my audience doesn't tend to know what the hell Discord is. So it was like, yeah, this is uh this is a mismatch. Forget it. Well, you know what? It, 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 it's it's always hit and miss, isn't it? Yeah, like you try things. If it doesn't work, you try something else. But here's something. Uh, speaking of guys who try things and will, willing to try anything, you had a guy named Tom Green on your show recently, and you're talking about changing over the years. Let's have a, a listen to your interview with Tom Green. Because when they come to my stand-up show, they just saw I'm actually more outrageous when I do stand-up than I was 20 years ago. It's it's So people... People are excited to I see that. I can't imagine how that's more outrageous. What do you bring? You actually bring a cow on the stage? Uh, you know, the perf- when you're in a room and you're seeing a performance, a very high energy performance, I do a lot of improv with the crowd. I talk about a lot of subjects that are, are meaningful to people and it really uh, connects with people in a way differently than on television where you're really in a room and you're really just kind of connecting with an audience is a much more almost like a, uh, and, a, and a meaningful experience, I think, for people. I mean, it's a whole different exchange of energy. The people are right there in front of you. If they yeah. hate you, you know right away. If they love you, you know right away. So uh, we're the same okay, shirt. We're going to get you a new shirt. We're going to get you a new shirt, Ed. Or, well, it's kind of like um, uh, they used we'll get to say you a that the reason, uh, they used to say that Clark Kent always wore a blue suit with a white uh, shirt and red tie uh, because those were the colors that uh, – the fabric was dyed with the special chemicals that made them uh, uh, resist friction when he changed to Superman. So that's my answer. Uh, all of my clothes are, are dyed this way uh, for various reasons. Well, you guys, you both, you and Tommy talked about, you know, what Tom talked about hard work, talent, and uh, luck being the three combinations in that interview that uh, two of the three, you have to have two of the three to be successful, luck, talent, and hard work. And, uh, you know, you've been, uh, I think, had, had, the, had, had hit the mark at all, all three over the years. And obviously, Tom has two, uh, in addition to uh, good looks, which, which is very helpful. Well, thank um, you. I'm glad you noticed. Yeah. So, uh, but you guys talked about evolving in, the, in terms of comedy. And what, what do you think of the biggest changes here in the uh, whatever century we're on now, 21st? Uh, in comedy in general? Yeah, is there any evolution here? And is there evolution how it's well, how it's, it is, uh, you know, it's it's how more it's of a, performed. It's more of a devolution than an evolution. Um, okay, because uh, people scream so much on the internet, you can get you know canceled as they call it. Uh, comedy is sometimes off color. It's sometimes in bad taste. And in the context of, for example, a comedy club, you know that going in, you understand it's just part of the it's just part of the gig. It's not meant to be a political statement. You're making a joke. Uh, Now, in the past, during social upheavals, it was comedians who helped uh, society learn to accept different thinking by Uh taking the political stuff and making it humorous and pointing out, you know, where our thinking may be deficient. George Carlin, Richard Pryor, comedians like that. They they were important to... uh, helping manage social change. Well, the social change that's going on now is being done without comedians. Because comedians are like, I don't need to get all this crap. Comedians who used to make their money doing nooners, which are gigs at universities, like lunchtime gigs, stop doing them. Because these kids were uh, oversensitive at any use of a word. It didn't matter the context. It was just the use of a word. They said, the hell with this. And the now the, the, the pendulum swinging, you got guys like Dave Chappelle who uh, are, are going like are basically saying, I'm going to I'm just going to say whatever I want and uh, I'm going to be brutal about it and I'm going to be insensitive. And uh, it'd be one thing if it was funny. The problem is a, a lot of his uh, material, like, he needs to hire back whatever writers he used to have because uh-huh, uh-huh. it's it's OK 
to make comments. But comedy should never punch down. It should always punch up. So we should never be making fun of, of you know, vulnerable communities because that's shooting fish in a barrel. Comedy is supposed to speak for the underdog, uh, n- not beat up on the underdog. Right. So who who would you think are some of the, uh, you know, the the trailblazers in that realm right now? Like no idea. No idea. I don't uh, I don't follow. I mean, stand up comedy isn't on TV every day like it was, you know, the evening at the improv show. Um, I don't follow stand up comedy the same way uh, I'm not on much music. I don't follow pop culture, pop music, because why right. would I if I don't have to? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Right. So, uh, yeah, I've, uh, I saw you do some streeters during the pandemic. I'm not sure if you had the same shirt on or not, but, uh, what was the Chances objective? Are. <laughs> Chances are. What was the objective, uh, when you, you approached the, that group of, uh, anti-COVID uh, prost- protesters? I, I wanted to get a sense of, uh, who these people were and what their problem was. Right. So, uh, the, you know, the lady I, with the uh, sign upside down. Hey. The, oh, the upside, yeah, the upside down yeah. sign. Um, and yeah. the other lady who was carrying a sign that said, uh, they're trying, look, same shirt, same shirt. Right. Um, yeah. The other lady <laughs> wearing a, uh, a, uh, a, a sign that said, they're trying to shut me up. They're trying to shut me up. Said, Who's trying to shut you up? She said, you, uh, the media. Yeah. I said, well, I'm media and I'm here and you're talking. So who's shutting you up? I said, you got a sign there? You're out here in public? Who's shutting you up? And she had no answer because all she right. had was a slope. They were yeah, crazy. That, uh, it was yeah, interesting, that, Joe. Yeah, is go that, ahead. Uh, is that uh, they were all, they all had different complaints. Like some uh-huh. of them had almost nothing to do with COVID. Like uh, people co- uh, protesting 5G. Uh, like they were, there was people there. It was just like, it was like, <laughs> A, uh, a flea market of lunatics, each of them yeah. with their own axe to grind. But they knew if th- this is going to be a place for lunatics. So bring your own brand of lunacy down there. Even if it's slightly off brand from the topic, it, you're still there amongst uh, your tinfoil hat wearing public. Uh-huh. Damn you, 5G. Damn you, 5G. I know. It's, uh, it's <laughs> HCTV. So ma- it's so it's ruining problems. my life. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so uh, 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 it looked like that one guy was getting a little aggressive. Uh, yeah. It looked the, the guy, guy in the marijuana so... suit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. actually, uh, the uh, off like we didn't include it, but uh, the cops had to come over yeah. and uh, get him to back off, which I've never really had happen. Uh, right. You know, in all the years, going out with the crowds in front of uh, Much, going at uh, yeah. concerts and things. I, I've never really had anybody be uh, belligerent, bordering on violent, uh, but this guy was. I mean, he was out; of, he was stoned out of his gourd. But I thought that yeah. stuff was supposed to make you mellow. <laughs> yeah, apparently not. So no, apparently uh, had the reverse effect on that guy. So now you're at the ninety four nine The Rock, and uh, we actually spotted you. This is Paul Patsko, our, our, our crack uh, video guy who's the best video librarian in the country. Uh, he got some video of you uh, on the golf course. Let's have a look. All right, well, look who I found. Craig. Ed. Craig. Ed. Sweetie. How so, are you? Go, what's this business about you want to, uh, you know, impale me with your well, golf club? What listen, is that all about? I've always thought very fondly of you, Ed. No, uh, no insult was meant. All apologies. Much respect. Always been a big fan. Look at you backpedaling. <laughs> I mean, oh, I backpedal like Yeah, I mean, I, like, honestly, aren't you a little bit ashamed? <laughs> I spend most of my life ashamed. Yeah, you same know, shirt. And, uh, yeah, yeah, same shirt. And you, you tend to bring out the, the best shame in all of us, buddy. I just wanted you to know that. Well, I, uh, I tend to bring out uh, the human being in people. That's what I loved about and what celebrities liked about being interviewed with me. I didn't ask them the same old questions. I, I asked them things that made them think and made them laugh. And if you want to, to relate, you want people to be able to relate to you, laughter is a great equalizer. Uh, it really shows you as a human being when you're laughing at something the audience is laughing at. 
there's a there's a real connection. I mean, Lenny Kravitz was being a real pain in the ass uh, during mm-hmm. one uh, MMBAs, uh, and for, for some reason he agreed to do an interview with me. And I show up, and the room the room is very tense, very quiet, and Lenny is very you know Mr. Cool Guy detached. Uh-huh. And I start the interview, and uh, he's trying to be really you know cool and you know uh, aloof. And then I asked him a question, which, uh, you know, wouldn't be something acceptable today. Um, but I noted to him that he's a ladies man. And I said, do you think women should be savored like a fine wine or guzzled like a malt liquor? And he paused and he looked away, trying to maintain his composure. And he looked back and then he burst out laughing. And it, it broke his entire facade, that entire aloof facade. Everyone in the room started laughing, and I didn't realize he was there. But over in the corner, Denzel Washington had been sitting there. Uh, and he started laughing. He leaned on a tray that was uh, on those, those folded legs that was holding uh, glasses of water and spilled them all on the ground. So I yelled at him for interrupting the interview. Yeah, that, that is classic Ed the Sock, you know, and, and I think that's one of the things that attracted uh, me to Ed the Sock in the beginning, too, man. You just, you, you had a way of, uh, of making things where, you know, this crazy world uh, makes sense in, in, in that kind of way. So uh, I got to ask you a sports question. It's been 56 and a half years now since the Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup. Uh, the question everybody wants to know, of course, is uh, what's Ed's opinion on, on the blue and white? Okay, there... It's the same every year. They managed to make it to the playoffs and people delude themselves. Like, this is going to be the year. This is going to... No, it's not. It's not going to be the... This is going to be the year that it's the same as 56 other years. It's... The, the Leafs brand is is losing. So if they w- start winning, they're violating their brand. Listen, when you make as much money uh, from merchandising and ticket sales as the owners of the Leafs do... Why would you spend a lot of money to uh, to get players so that you could win? It's a business. If you're making money, don't spend money you don't need to spend. Look what happened with the, the Blue Jays. They won back-to-back World Series, and they couldn't afford people anymore. And they've been and also ran ever since. So, you know, professional sports is a business. If you're already making a ton of money, why would you spend extra money for a, a little to no gain? The, re- the place you can spend money because of the salary cap, mostly today, is, is places like, uh, you know, uh, assistant coaching, uh, you know, off-ice training, uh, you know, stuff like, uh, you know, trying to bring in the best people possible and, 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 and that type of thing. And maybe that's where the least have fallen short. Of, I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I have no idea. All I know is, no, this will not be the year. Okay, there you go. So, uh, final question: uh, What's the best advice you've ever received or, or given, for that matter? Ah, uh, best advice I ever received was from a grade seven uh, English teacher. When we, every day we had to do creative writing, and it had to hand it in, and I thought one day that my creative writing was not up to par. So I told him I didn't want to hand it in. He has a young sock. Uh, I actually had braces back then. Um, and uh-huh. uh, Mr. Dulmich, may he rest in peace, uh, said to me, uh, Ed, they can't all be your best girl. And that stuck with me. It means not everything you do is going to be the best thing you can do. Sometimes good enough, you have to accept. You'll Some things will be great. Other things, you can't sit there and... Uh, you know, meditate on it. You got to just do it. And uh, that comes in handy in Canadian media. And I mean, I love, I, I give out advice on the all night show, which is what I do 94, nine, the rock uh, midnight to 5. AM Monday to Friday. We've got a regular stable of callers. They're all very distinct personalities. You would think a yeah. comedy writer yeah. was writing them, but no, these are real people. They call <laughs> up and I talk to them. And uh, every phone call is just, it's like opening up a jar of mixed nuts and jumping in. And uh, many of them have come to like, ask me 
for like personal advice and things like that. I guess they've known me so long that uh, they feel comfortable. I'm kind of like both the bartender and the guy sitting next to you at the bar. Yeah. Bartender and like that you're the whole you're the whole cast of cheers. Yeah, uh, that's me. <laughs> yeah. So uh the uh the 949 the rock is where we can find you. We can also find you where else? Where else can we find you? Well, I mean, I'm on Twitter if anybody goes to that dumpster fire anymore. Uh I'm on Instagram Excellent. now and again. Uh I was on TikTok. I got off TikTok because it made me sick. Um uh, I'm on Facebook, and uh, it, you can find if you're not in the GTA or you don't want to stay up past midnight, uh, you can uh, go to the Rock.fm or the Rock app, and you'll find the uh, under on demand. There's the All Star All Night Show, which is the best of show that runs on the weekends, where I curate uh, the best calls of the week. So, and that right. you can just listen to anytime you want. So you can listen to see what uh, some of those uh, clients at Cheers have to say. And uh, by the way, I caught your interview with Howie Mandel. It was awesome. Very good. Yeah. Oh, it, it, Howie was a great guest. I have to say that. That's yeah, yeah. For sure. yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's available on there too as well, right? Yeah. Uh, he's, you know, I had never spoken to him before that, and he didn't know who the hell yeah. I was. Uh, <laughs> but it uh, it turned out for the better. He was obviously yeah, was trying good. to bust my chops. At the beginning, yeah, yeah. and discovered yeah. he couldn't do that. Uh, that I give no. back, and then it became a it became a fun, probably my favorite yeah. interview in a long, long time. Yeah, it was good, man. It was good. It was fun, and that's what happens, Thanks. right? So that that that's vintage Ed. Uh, listen, buddy, thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, good luck with all of, all the media stuff and ninety four nine. Check it out, uh, um, ninety four nine The Rock. What's what's the web website again? TheRock.fm. TheRock.fm. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Joe. All right. More sports when we come back. What our kids breathe matters more than ever. But how can you tell if a school is safe to breathe in? If you could actually see what's in the air, would you keep them home? Introducing Air Patrol, making the invisible visible, ensuring schools are safer for everyone. Breathe safely. All right, my Swiss pick of the week. Last week, I went with the number two horse, fast and ready in the third race. Six and a half furlongs for maiden two-year-old fillies at Woodbine. Always tough to call these. Fast and ready had the lead in the stretch, but it was another Mark Cassie trainee, Sharif Ali, with a great finishing kick. Patrick Husbands, the winning rider, owned by Betts Thoroughbred, Inc., paying ten seventy to win. The 3-2-6 triactor returned $129.20. Didn't have it, though. This week, I'm looking at Thursday night's fifth race at Woodbine, a $114,000 allowance, a mile and one sixteenth on the main track. Phillies and mares, I like the number five horse, Motown Mayhem, ridden by Sahin Savachi, trained by Mark Cassie. Two wins in the second in her last three races. I also like the five and one and three for the exactor and triactor. Go to woodbine.com for the latest racing info, replays on YouTube. You can also get the latest from Woodbine Thoroughbred and Woodbine Standard Bread on Instagram and X. Go to hpibet.com, darkhorsebets.com, and bet365 for your wagering options. Discover the finest patio experience in Toronto at the Stella Ortois Terrace. Situated on the third floor of Woodbine Racetrack, delight in mouth-watering shared appetizer and raise a toast to the evening. Relish expertly prepared main courses that will tantalize your taste buds. Capture the beauty of sunsets. Indulge in delectable desserts. Secure your reservation today and immerse yourself in the excitement of the races. Enjoy an unparalleled view of the thrilling finish line. Well, it's a special place and uh, the food is great, the atmosphere, it's uh, it's really a, a, a nice experience. Experience the enchantment of Stella Ortois Terrace, open four days a week. 
Undoubtedly the city's premier patio destination. Addiction Rehab Toronto, Toronto's number one alcohol and drug treatment center, saving lives, reuniting families. The only treatment center in the province to offer medical detox, treatment, sober living, and lifetime aftercare all in one place. Our unique and specialized programs are designed to equip our clients with the tools to successfully lead a life of dignity, respect, and purpose. Let us help save your life or your loved one's life. Call today for more information or to facilitate an intervention. 1-855-787-2424 or visit addictionrehabtoronto.ca. Attention security seekers, ready to take control? Introducing Corporate Protection and Investigative Services, your ultimate solution. Retailers tired of losing profits to theft? Our retail loss prevention experts have you covered. Mobile patrol, close body protection, insured door persons, we've got your security needs covered from all angles. Background investigations and civil recovery programs, trust us for thorough solutions. Licensed by the Ministry of Solicitor General, fully insured and bonded. Visit www.corporateprotection.ca or call 1-800-827-1692 for top-notch security and private investigation services. MNP, a leading Canadian national accounting tax and business accounting firm. MNP proudly serves and responds to the need of their clients in the private, public, and non-profit sectors. Through partner-led engagements, MNP provides a collaborative, cost-effective approach to do business and personal strategies to help people and organizations to succeed across the country and around the world. With local offices in Oshawa, Mississauga, Burlington, and more, their team is here to support you. Visit mnp.ca today to learn more. And we want to thank all the folks who make this show possible. These are friends, trusted business associates, and all around great people. We highly recommend them all. Thank you for your support of Canadian and local sports. A reminder that the show is available on iTunes, Spotify, Breaker, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, as well as the Spanglish Network, Zingo TV, and Buzz TV Live. Also, check out the show on YouTube. YouTube. All of our past great shows and clips are on there. Some shorts, lots of fun. You can spend hours on there. Like and subscribe. It's absolutely free. Thanks once again to Ed the Sock for being on the show. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Brian Gribben Insurance Planning, helping you solidify your financial future. At BGIP, what we do that's unique in the marketplace is we show people how to spend and enjoy their money in their early years of retirement without the fear of running out. Also, we're able to do this without you having to change financial advisors. Please look us up at bgip.ca today. Let's book a 30-minute phone call to see how we can bring value to you and your family and your planning. Call Brian today for all your retirement needs. We did. 905-686-5678. Air quality at work matters more than ever but there's no way to tell if a space is safe to breathe in. If you could actually see what's in the air, would you even come to work? Introducing Air Patrol, making the invisible visible, ensuring workplaces are safer for everyone. Breathe safely. Rooted in 60 years of tradition, Sleepy Hollow is a private golf club with a friendly community of members just minutes from Toronto. With mature trees and rolling fairways, Sleepy Hollow provides a challenging and enjoyable experience for passionate golfers. Enjoy great golf, amazing dining, and a picturesque patio second to none. Visit SleepyHollowCountryClub.com. Hi there, I'm Joe Tilly. Are you ready for an adventure of a lifetime? Next March, during the enchanting cherry blossom season, join me and my wife for an unforgettable two-week journey to Japan and South Korea. In Japan, you'll experience the magic of the season as we visit the stunning Osaka Castle against the backdrop of cherry blossoms. Feed the adorable Sika deer at Nara Park, glide through picturesque landscapes on the famed bullet train, 
cruise on Lake Kawaguchi and witness the awe-inspiring view of Mount Fuji. Relax in natural hot springs and savor a delightful Fuji dinner banquet while dressing in traditional robes. And of course, we'll dive into Tokyo's cutting-edge technology scene. In Korea, dress in elegant hanbok attire and step back in time at Chang Dok Gong Palace. Wander through Andong Village, a true glimpse into Korea's rich heritage. Delight your taste buds with the flavors of Korean barbecue. We'll even visit the DMZ area to get a glimpse of mysterious North Korea. And guess what? This incredible journey is all yours for just $54.99, all inclusive with direct flights from Vancouver or $58.99 from Toronto. Book now to unlock up to an extra $1,700 in upgrades and savings. Let's make some memories. Let's explore. Let's travel. Guests on Joe Tilly Sports receive a gift certificate from Classica Imports. Top of the line, imported men's clothing. Check out the Classica Essential Collection now. Go to shopclassica.com.